Today's the day you've been waiting for. You get to meet the baby bull snakes from Mr. and Mrs. Wilson's clutch. I have learned so much from this clutch of bull snakes, like honestly. First, I learned that if you have a clutch of eggs and you split them up into two different containers, and those containers are a mere half degree off from each other, that will alter the hatch date between the two. In my case, I had Mrs. Wilson's eggs separated into two different containers, since she had so many eggs. One of the containers was stacked on top of the other in my incubation room, and since heat rises, the upper container, which is the container that hatched first was about half a degree warmer than the lower container. So during that live egg cutting, if you remember, there was one group of eggs that was starting to pip and the other container was showing no signs of hatching whatsoever. I thought that since they all went into incubation at the same time, they'd all be ready, but I was wrong. All of the eggs in this container hatched and nobody in here was showing any signs of hatching. So I was starting to get really worried and I thought that there was some sort of like bacterial infection or virus that must have spread through the eggs and killed the babies inside. But I let them sit in incubation for a little bit longer and about four to five days later, they finally started hatching. Sadly, not all of the babies hatched. This does happen occasionally when you're breeding snakes. For one of the eggs, it hatched, but then the baby died shortly afterwards. I think it had some neurological issues from what I could see when it was out of the egg. So it was probably for the better that it died of natural causes and will most likely be donating the snake to someone who preserves specimens in like a wet specimen container so at least the baby won't go to waste. Also if you remember the big egg that we were trying to figure out if there were twins inside or not and it just ended up during the live cutting being a single albino snake. That snake sadly was a stillborn and it never did hatch. Thankfully, if you have a stillborn baby snake and you also have like a monitor, a tegu, or an alligator, they'll recycle it for you. Here, take care of this. Here. Thank you. The rest of the babies, however, all hatched and are doing great. There were 20 eggs total, so we had 18 bull snakes, and I'm going to show them to you now. We ended up with, drum roll please, six normals, although they're not completely normal because dad or Mr. Wilson was a hypo albino, het whiteside, and het exanthic, and mom or Mrs. Wilson was het exanthic, het whiteside, and het albino. So that means all of these babies are 100% het hypo and albino, and they have a 66% chance of being het for whiteside and exanthic. As you can see, some bull snakes are very friendly right from the beginning, and others are kind of sassy straight out of the egg. However, even if they're sassy, if you handle them a lot, they calm right down. Even the feistiest of baby bull snakes, you just have to call their bluff because at this age, their teeth can't really do anything. They can't do anything at all, really. You feel tiny little pokes, but they can't break the skin at this age. So you can just hold them, let them try to bite you, and then they will figure out that you're not gonna hurt them, and then they calm down. Some of the normals, like the one on the bottom here, have some beautiful brown coloration to their sides compared to the one up here. So it's probably not a genetic morph, it's just what he looks like in particular, but something really pretty that Ed saw and we thought we'd point out to you. Something kind of amusing on these normals is that they all have this like thick black band across their face that makes them look like they're gangsters wearing sunglasses. And some of the babies, since they've been out for about a week now, the first, first round anyway, are already starting to show signs of going into shed. After they shed, we'll give them their first meals. Now for the morphs. We ended up with five white-sided bull snakes. This morph is pretty self-explanatory. The sides of the snake just don't have any pattern whatsoever, and they have white sides as a result. Another thing I learned during this clutch is that white-sided bull snakes have white heads as well with those black eyes. So some of those eggs that I was curious about with white faces, they pretty much all ended up being these white-sided bull snakes. Some of them have more of a dorsal pattern than others. For example, this white-sided has dorsal patterning that goes about halfway down its side, whereas this white-sided, it stops pretty far up and it has very thick white sides. So this is just a difference between a high and a low expression white-sided. Another cool thing about the white-sided mutation is that some of the babies have a completely red or pink tongue 
and some of the babies have pink and black tongues combined, kind of like a garter snake almost. I think the one over here, it's kind of split down the middle if I remember correctly. So their tongues are, yep, split. one fork is black and one fork is pink. So really unique traits going on with the white-sided bull snakes. Just kidding, we have a sixth white-sided bull snake. There was one more amongst the uh, other snakes in the baby bin. And this one has like a white circle on its head, which is really unique. That's kind of cool, I haven't seen that before. Next, we ended up getting three albinos, two of which are high white. So high white just means there's more white in their scales than in regular albinos. Oh my gosh, dealing with so many noodles can be tough. This one is your typical albino bull snake with those red eyes and an overall orange and yellow color. And this one is a high white albino. As you can see, there's um, above and below each orange band, there's a little bit of white. If they're anything like their dad, these spots of white will just brighten with age. So I think this one and this one, which is also high white, will make beautiful adult bull snakes. Just to compare what the normal albino and the high white look like, check this out. Isn't that beautiful? That's just so cool, the differences in just albinos. The last big thing I learned during this clutch is that this is what an albino looks like. And this is what a snow looks like. Yes, we did get a snow. And this is not only just a normal pattern snow, this is a white-sided snow. So we really hit the jackpot with this snake. The snow morph is albino and exanthic combined. The albino gene removes the black pigmentation in the scales, and that's also why they have red eyes instead of black eyes. And the exanthic gene removes the red coloration from the scales. So all that you're left with is pretty much a white and yellow snake. But wait, there's more. There's not just one white-sided snow. There's two and Three! We have three snows and they're all white-sided. The younger ones here have a little bit of pink coloration in their scales because those scales haven't solidified yet. So the blood vessels uh, underneath kind of give a more pinkish hue. This was the first one that hatched and those scales are maybe solidifying a teeny bit more so it looks a little bit brighter right now. But all three of these are white-sided snows. Because of their softer scales and their light coloration in general, you can almost see it inside of these snows. You can see their organs and you can see some of their blood vessels underneath the scales too, which is kind of weird, but also really fascinating. Can you believe it guys? Not just one snow, but three, and not just regular snows, but all three are white-sided snows. I am still in disbelief that we hit the odds so well with these three. I believe... These two are boys, and it looks like we have one girl as well. So I think we're going to be keeping a pair of these. So there you go, all the babies from Mr. and Mrs. Wilson's clutch. All sorts of cool morphs and morph combinations in there. So stoked right now, but they will be for sale. However, we have quite a bit of a waiting list for these babies. So if there are any unclaimed babies after we go through that list, I will be posting them on the available reptiles tab on our website, which is just snakediscovery.com. And they will be for sale after they take a few meals and have their first shed. So we're looking at probably the beginning of August. So again, keep an eye on that page on the website. And if you miss out on this clutch, we're going to have more babies, more baby bull snakes too. We'll have a hypo clutch hatching. Actually, they're due tomorrow. And we'll also have Brad and Janet's normal baby bull snakes hatching in just a couple of weeks. So we'll have plenty of bull snakes here really soon. Thank you for bearing with us and thank you for your patience while we waited for all of the babies to finally hatch. And I'm glad that you finally got to meet them all today. Thanks again for watching too, and we'll see you next time.